the first of a number of presentations on refurbishment um, and how you, how you go about it and what you need to think about. Um, we've got Elizabeth McKenzie from uh, Winder Power. Um, Elizabeth's got a lot of experience in the transformer industry, um, going back over a number of companies and various different aspects. Um, and Carlos Villa, um, despite what his name tag says, is actually Scottish, or so he tells me. <laughs> um, he's, actually, he's actually one of the, the, the guys I work with quite a bit. Um, so, interesting to hear how, what they have to say. Elizabeth and Carlos, you give us your presentation, thanks. Thank you. Um, okay, we're going to talk about transformer refurbishment. Um, so, um, I'll give a brief introduction to refurbishment, um, and then we'll go into how you decide which transformers are going to be refurbished. So, assessment of transformers, um, where the, the refurbishment would be carried out. Is it to be carried out on site, or is it to go back to um, a factory type environment. Um, then Car Carlos will speak about the Scottish Power approach to how they um, assess transformers and carry out refurbishment. Um, a little bit on what refurbishment can be carried out and we've got some examples as well. So transformers as you all know are key items of the electrical infrastructure. And transformers are aging. We saw a slide in uh, Zhong Dong Wang's presentation where she showed that um, National Grid have a number of transformers over 40 years old. Um, and that applies throughout the whole range of transformers. A lot of them are coming to the end or past their uh, nominal end of life, which is 20 to 40 years, depending on um, the application. And there is um, pressure to refurbish rather than the replace transformers. Um, a lot of this is coming through regulation, uh, through um, responsible use of um, assets and um, also budgetary um, pressures. Um, so the regulators are pushing to get efficiency and savings. Um, there are too many transformers to replace at once. If National Grid decided to replace all those transformers that are in this sort of 40 to 50 year bracket, there probably wouldn't be enough capacity in, in factories to manufacture new ones. So um, re replacing all of your transformers at once is not um, a feasible option. And there are new techniques of available now to uh, enable users to decide which transformers are in need of refurbishment and in which order. So why do we refurbish? Well, it saves money and time. Um, the cost of refurbishment is obviously the less than the cost of buying a new transformer, approximately 40 to 50 percent, depending on the level of refurbishment that's carried out. Um, sometimes it's possible to carry out refurbishment under operating expenditure rather than capital expenditure and that to give benefits in um, being able to um, get approvals and having the money readily available to carry out refurbishment. It's not working. Oh, sorry. Um, it can be quicker than purchasing a new transformer. Um, the parts and the equipment required to uh, to refurbish a transformer can be a lot quicker than, uh, for example, having to specify the transformer, go out to tender, assess the bids, place the order, purchase the materials, build and test, and then uh, deliver a transformer. So there's considerable time saving. And as I said, there is regulatory pressure on the networks from the UK to reduce costs and uh, by not buying transformers but refurbishing them. Uh, so, in the new regulatory period, which starts in April 2015, uh, the UK district network, uh, network operators have said that they are going to refurbish approximately 1,012 um, primary transformers and they're only going to replace 888 transformers um, in that same period. So, in the plans, there's more refurbishment than replacement 
to go ahead. So. Thank you. We take over. Uh, morning, everyone. And uh, you can tell me later if uh, Tom was right about my Scottish accent. <laughs> Um, so I will continue uh, with the reasons that um, may uh, drive a user to uh, go for the refurbishment route. So uh, extend asset life. Uh, we need to make uh, a more the, mo the most responsible and efficient use of our of our units, and um, and to, to to get the most the biggest benefit. As possible from the from this investment we do, and also some there are some situations where um, increasing the capacity of a transformer will be an option and will be required. Uh, upgrading cooling and um, increase uh, and upgrading also the monitoring equipment will give us some MVAs which we may need because of a. Uh, changing requirements in, in the load. And there's also the, the issue about the, remain, the remaining life in the, in the units we have in the network at the, at the moment. And I'm, I'm glad to see that in the first presentation uh, today, that was also mentioned. Uh, I think now, uh, after a couple of years, uh, we know now that it is there. The, there has, remaining life in many in several too many units in the network because of the uh, traditionally over engineered designs in, in materials and clearances also the changing in load requirements from industrial sites to residential sites and uh, so there's a particular interest uh, especially in the in power plants and generation where these power plants are operating over its expected lifetime and it could be a too big investment to replace the transformers for just few more few more years there's also some sometimes which makes sense uh, to refurbish a transformer when uh, to keep it as a spare um, we've we've seen in scottish power um, power plants closed and then therefore some units not being used anymore and in reasonable good conditions so we may use it somewhere else in the network after refurbishing them um, so um, then i will continue with them to for us what is more important is selecting the correct units for refurbishment um, there are so many things to, to take into account and we need to make sure that obviously uh, the investment by refurbishment will be lower than replacement but it's still a significant investment so we need to make sure we we tick all the boxes and and apply a, a robust criteria to the whole fleet to hundreds and hundreds of transformers to select the most suitable ones with the with the most remaining life in, in them to get uh, the most the, be the bigger benefit. Uh, things to consider, and that's something uh, I, will, I will talk about Scottish power experience later, but we've been learning over the, over the last two years and by uh, and adding more and more parameters to it. Not uh, an excessive age to get the 10, 20 years we expect. Uh, load, obviously no load and no load replacement plans. Um, as an example, a 6.6 .6 kV transformer will, which will be replaced in six years because of upgrading 11 kV. <coughs> so we don't want to refurbish that one. Criticality, several reasons. Environmental, close to a river, uh, public impact. Um, in, a, in the city center or in the mall, in a mall. Clear maintenance records, tap changer bushings, and outages. Uh, that was a, quite a, a challenge last year with 
all things happening in Scotland, like uh, Commonwealth Games, we needed to um, postpone some of the refurbishment we plan to do. Um, so, to do this assessment and to, to, to take to get the best candidates, we there's a whole list of tests and and tools available. Um, so, we had at the beginning 900 transformers. We need to create some rules and 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 and, and some base ground uh, uh, rules to 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 obtain the best candidates. Uh, so. Inspections um, were, were, was one of the things uh, you need to do. Uh, site assessments, uh, taking a look to the whole unit, all accessories. Obviously, internal condition, oil analysis, including DGA, moisture, acidity, uh, condition of the solid insulation via DP values. Um, that will give us you the, a first uh, bunch of transformers. Uh, to, to, to then plan your site visits and not going to every single substation. Uh, obviously, there are other tools when we have a doubt, and especially for grid units where uh, more farther electrical testing may be required to ensure this, there is enough uh, remaining life in the, in the unit. Um, okay, so I will talk about SPEN experience, which is not large. It's, we've been doing refurbishments uh, with uh, Winder and also others um, over the last two years. And we would like to share it uh, because it, with the industry, there are many lessons learned in that very short period. So I think we will, and, and the, we are reviewing this every single time. Um, so we started 2013. Um, it was actually driven from not the transformer-like experts, but from the operational teams. Like, when are you re replacing this transformer? It looks horrible, and it did. But it wasn't in any replacement plan. So I wonder why. Because obviously the, the replacement plans will be more focused on oil analysis and, and internal. Uh, condition of the transformer, active part, winding score, etc. So it was going to be there for a while, and it was in good condition internally. So we said, okay, we should be doing something to keep that internal good condition, which may disappear next next year. Um, only targeting primary transformers so far. We're going to upgrade uh, for next year to 132 kb as well. We have only experience with the 3311 uh, KV transformers. Again, good internal condition was, uh, the requ uh, was required. <laughs> and that meant uh, because of the cost uh, of cost benefit analysis between replacement and refurbishment that we will do only so far uh, on site refurbishments. So no intrusive in tank uh, operations. Age 30 to 45 years, this is very uh, uh, flexible. Clear maintenance, load records, no tap changer issues. Because we're doing only on site and not touching the internals, we, will, we want to, to have a clear maintenance history in the tap changer, in the bushings, cable boxes, etc. No peak loads during a certain period of its life as well. Then, to sum up, to apply a, a robust criteria to all units. So far, we have a positive experience. We think um, it has its risks. Obviously, it's not like buying a new, brand new replace, uh, replacement. But it's, we have a positive experience over 20 units now. Um, and all the lessons learned uh, during these two years will lead us for future improvements. With developed, we developed a specification which has been already changed for tr twice in, in less than two years. This, I will go through some, some of the big main points. Uh, 
prioritization of different activities, we, we want to, to treat the whole unit. Uh, we are based on a holistic approach, so we don't want to fix some things and leave them, and, and then uh, after two years, others failing. We want to ensure that the whole unit is working and will work after the refurbishment. So, and we have a very enough, sorry, very short time available due to outage availability. So, in a five five day outage, you want to make sure you get the most important things like tap changer, uh, fixing leaks, um, component replacement, etc. You want to prior prioritize those rather than others you can maybe do later, like painting. Very clear scope of works. Um, no misunderstanding what uh, touch-up painting means, what uh, maintenance of a tap changer or refurbishment of tap a tap changer means. You want to be very, very clear. Uh, and preparation is, is very important. Um, site visits not only once, you need to take measurements. You don't think you don't need to assume that two uh, twin units uh, measure exactly the same, <laughs> especially the cooler banks. Um, cleaning, planning. You, um, so for the cleaning, for example, uh, before oil leaks can be sealed, there's a lot to do with cleaning. So once it's clean, you you really see where the oil is coming from. And that will take you a day. So the, everything that you can prepare in advance, the better. This is just a, 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 a one example uh, would, I would like to share. Uh, Elizabeth will, will show you later more. Uh, 15, 20 MBA, 3311, 1966. Um, we chose this one because of a good internal condition, a quite poor inter external condition, and also because the substation, uh, the, the 11 kV switch gear and all the equipment has been replaced, so we're investing in the, in the substations as a whole, and we want, to, to, we want it to, to be in good condition as a whole. So I think we think that makes sense, and not only changing bits. Um, so leave all assets in good condition and, and minimize the risk. Uh, so there were leaks, several leaks, uh, cable boxes, uh, rust, um, gaskets to be replaced, uh, some components as well, protection. One fan wasn't working. And in this particular one, gaskets were replaced, uh, including conservator, fixing leaks. Uh, the band was clean, new radiators because they were leaking uh, significantly, new fan, new PRD, which was, which, which was actually broken, and we discovered that, and was free breathing from there, the transformer. New buckles relay, rust remove, uh, tap changer maintenance kyra out, and, uh, so, and the oil also treated, so filtered and degassed over two, two circulations, I think. So the whole thing was done. And this was, it's only a picture, but it's, uh, this was the result. So I've been uh, talking about more on-site refurbishment, which has been a SPEN approach, and Elizabeth will continue with uh, factory refurbishment. Um, if um, some major intervention is required in the transformer, then it might require a fully equipped workshop to carry out that work. Um, if there's anything um, in the winding insulation, it can be dried out. Um, quite often, as transformers age, the insulation has absorbed moisture, uh, um, and uh, the clamping of the transformer has become loose, so we can tighten up the core clamping, but you can't do these things readily on site. Um, it's easier if you can take it back to somewhere where there is a controlled environment with an oven uh, to dry out and tighten the clamping. Um, sometimes 
due to a fault or due to the condition of the windings, um, a replacement of windings, either of the same design or new design, may be required. And I think um, looking at the, um, the agenda for the conference, I think it, some of these are going to be covered in more detail in other people's um, presentations this week. So it will be interesting to see how um, other people have approached these things. Um, you can replace the insulation with high temperature insulation, which gives you more life and more capacity in your transformer. But of course, that's adding to the expense because you're re um, replacing the windings effectively. And the other advantage of going back to the factory is that you can carry out high voltage testing, which can't be done on site, so that you get a bit more um, confidence that your transformer is fit for service if it's been tested. So this is an example of a transformer that came back. It's been, the active part was removed from the tank, um, it was dried out, retightened and reassembled, and we were able to test that transformer uh, to about 80% of its original test values and put it back. Um, it, that one, in fact, went back as a spare, so it's, it's in storage. Um, the other thing we can do um, in factory um, is to upgrade the cooling because we can, uh, as I said, replace the insulation with high temperature insulation to permit higher temperatures within the transformer. We can also carry out a temperature rise test on the transformer or review the original test results if they are available and um, assess the actual rating of the transformer based on its temperature rises um, and therefore um, assess whether it might be able to run at a higher rating than its, um, than its nameplate rating. Um, and there is also the facility to add radiators and or fans to increase the cooling capacity of the transformer if the active part, or the core and windings, are capable of taking additional load. Um, but it's always necessary to check the ratings of the ancillary equipment to make sure the bushings and tap changer and so on are able to take that higher rating. Um, so that's just an example of a transformer on temperaturized test in the factory. Um, and what is the result of refurbishment? Well, the, the expectation is that you will get 10 to 20 years more life out of your transformer. There is no guarantee. Um, there's no guarantee, obviously, um, that a new transformer will not fail within a few years, uh, less so with a transformer that's been in service. Um, but uh, the expectation is... Uh, there. So the operator must assess the risk and Carlos has already explained how Scottish Power carries out that assessment. The test, if you test in the factory that can give additional conf confidence in the, the, um, in the condition of the transformer. There is no possibility of recovery of life for degraded insulation so that is very important when you're assessing the transformer if the insulation is degraded, there's no point in carrying out um, any refurbishment without um, replacing the windings and insulation. And if the paper is known to be in a poor state, you have to replace the windings, obviously. The alternative is to replace the transformer. So I have a few more examples. This is a similar uh, example to the one that Carlos um, had in his example. So again, extensive leaks were repaired, particularly on the cable boxes. Gaskets were replaced, including the conservator. The bund was steam cleaned with new radiators, a new PRD, new book holes relay, and so on. Um, so this was the before picture. Um, you can see that there are a lot of leaks, um, particularly um, around the cable boxes here. There was a lot of um, leaking um, on both units on this site. And you can see that the bund area, the, the plinth, had a lot of um, um, oily residue on it. Um, that is another picture. Is that after? I think that's the transformers after they were 
repaired. So you can see that the, all, all the cable boxes have been cleaned up. Um, the bund has been cleaned. Um, another example was a transformer that was moved from one site to another due to um, load changes um, on the network. It was decided that this transformer um, should be removed from one site uh, where the load had reduced to go to another site where they needed additional load. It had a badly corroded tank. It was tested. It came, it, during the move, it came to the factory on its way to the new site. So it was tested on receipt at the factory, which made sure that um, it was in, uh, still in good condition. Uh, we shot blasted and repainted the tank, having removed the corn windings, of course. Um, we added new radiators, instruments, pipe work, valves, pressure relief device, um, overhauled the tap changer, and we dried out the core and windings and reclamped them. The bushings were also refurbished and reused. So this is the example. This is the transformer before um, it it was removed from site. So you can see that there's a lot of corrosion around the base of the transformer, um, on the marshalling kiosk, underneath uh, the cooler bank. There was a considerable amount of rust on that. Um, and that's the transformer installed in its new site. The cost of that was about 30 to 50 percent of the cost of a new transformer. Um, you can see that we completely replaced the marshalling kiosk with a stainless steel one and everything else was cleaned up um, and repainted. Another example where the, uh, it was just cooler bank refurbishment. In this case uh, the customer had decided that because um, the main tank was inside an enclosure, they didn't require work to be carried out on that. The main work was to replace the coolers. Again, they, they were old-fashioned tubular radiators. They were beginning to rust, particularly at the bottom. Um, but the steelwork was in quite good condition and could be reused. So the steelwork here, you can see, has been prepared and repainted. Um, new box section headers were added to take the modern radiators. And that's uh, a picture taken during the installation of the panel type radiators. Um, and that's the, the new cooler bank, totally assembled and ready for operation. Um, and that work was all carried out within 12 days on site. So everything was prepared well in advance. Um, as Carl said, we had to carry out a lot of several site visits to measure up to make sure everything was ready, and uh, it minimised the outage period for the customer. So in conclusion, the substation needs to be treated as a whole, not just looking at one asset. So when we talk about transformer refurbishment, everything in the substation needs to be taken into consideration. Um, the refurbishment of a transformer can save cost and time with respect to the purchase of a new transformer. So um, to get another 10 to 20 years life out of a transformer is less expensive than replacing it with new. Um, and the extent of the refurbishment depends upon the uh, condition of the transformer on site. So cellulose insulation cannot be regenerated and testing of the transformer, if it's taken to a factory, can give additional confidence in, um, in the state of the transformer. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Elizabeth and Carlos. Um, time for a couple of questions or comments. Does anybody want to start the ball rolling? I might have guessed. George? <laughs> He's been awful quiet up till now, right enough. Um, since I'm a little bit working on this field since about uh, 20 years, uh, one question is always uh, at, uh, the new transformer or the refurbished transformer. And uh, I found in the last time that many times it makes a lot of sense to keep with the old one uh, because uh, a new transformer must not be a really a reliable transformer. 
uh, my uh, experience is you buy with new transformer, new risks. Risk of design, risk of workmanship. Uh, if you refurbish an old transformer which worked 40 years correctly, even if you make the rewinding completely, um, from my point of view, mostly you have a more reliable uh, asset file uh, afterwards. Uh, Martin? Thank you. Uh, Elizabeth, my question just relates, I guess, to the last point there. You mentioned um, when the transformer comes in, it's tested, and then presumably you, you test mm -hmm. it again after all the refurbishment. And I just wonder if there's any particular tests that, that sort of indicate electrically um, an improvement or, or confidence in the, um, well, the refurbishment. Generally, we just carry out um, the routine tests according to the IEC specification um, and on a refurbished transformer we carry those out at 80% um, of the original test voltages but it, um, there's no no particular testing that we use. I know you're interested in PD but we're, we're working in the sort of 33 kV level of transformers so that that's not generally part of the testing routine. I think we'll come back to George again. Uh, do you make also this 80% test after you made uh, rewinding? No, if we've replaced the windings, then we would generally test at 100%. Okay, that's because it's a very often a big discussion between the uh, manufacturers. They always say, okay, the 80, look at the IC, the 80%, but if you have a new winding, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, we, we take the viewpoint that new windings is tested as a new transformer. Okay. I, th uh, I, think, I think you'll find that the new IEC 763 that was published a year or so ago actually clarifies that much better than before. Um, whereas before it just said previously in service, now it talks about service aged insulation requiring an 80% test. And if you've got new insulation, it's not service aged. Uh, but a question at the back from Zong Dong first before we go to Benedict, and we'll, we'll close it that. Um, I think I can shop. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, I, in my presentation, I was trying to say a post uh, mortem analysis is quite important. I know this is not, but uh, uh, I, I guess of most of the transformer are not manufactured by Wonder Power. So I was wondering, before you do refurbishment, um, would you do some sort of, not, not design review, I'm using the wrong word, but would you look at the design and then try to understand whether that design is good or bad, or what is the aging condition? So do you collect information like that? Or Scottish Power asks you to collect that sort of information? It's a good question. We wouldn't do, I mean, typically the design information available is not great, obviously, and drawings sometimes are not available as well. Uh, we will, one of, one of these um, boxes we need to tick is the type defects, obviously, and we will uh, take a lot of care on, on those, on type, known type defects, uh, on, on, on in the network or still in the network and um, we will obviously reject the, those transformers uh, because of their risk to to invest uh, a significant amount of money on them uh, this is mainly and obviously that affects to tap changer uh, and bushings uh, failure rates and parts available for tap changers also if you should allow me to say this chairman um, because of uh, Elizabeth is, is really uh, one of the um, experienced designers, so I, I guess um, if you look at the refurbished or to be refurbished transformer and pick up those information in terms of design, it will really benefit the DNOs in the whole country. Mm -hmm. I, I took an example. Um, I take one of the uh, DNO we work with. The majority of the transformers in their database are actually manufactured by Ferranti. So, so 
this probably 50% of the transformers at like 33 kV is manufactured by a single manufacturer, and which is which stopped to, to exist. So if if taking that opportunity to understand the design will benefit all the country. So I really think it's a good opportunity we shouldn't miss. Okay. Just to highlight after uh, a couple of questions here, uh, the the importance of that for us is that we know now that uh, we have uh, more chances to be successful. That means uh, we have post-mortem analysis also in Scottish Power. We've been starting doing this since a year or two ago. Uh, we have uh, ongoing research projects, one of them with Manchester University, old units still in service, giving us any problem and showing good results in oil. Uh, I think in the industry, uh, and also particularly in Scottish Power, we know more about it and we are more confident about it that we can do it. And it's a sensible and uh, the right thing to do. More than three, four years ago, for example, there's more information, there's more uh, experience shared acro across the industry than before. So, I've got one last comment on all of this. Um, Zongdong uh, said earlier on that um, the National Grid Work has yielded um, information that says the mean time to failure is about 82 years. Now, the experience I've seen is National Grid Transformers tend to be much heavily, much more heavily loaded than typical DIO ones, and certainly from a Scottish power perspective, that's the case. So, in reality, that would suggest that distribution transformers at 33 to 11, um, certainly if you're away from the major urban areas like London, um, these transformers have been lightly loaded relative to everything else, and 82 years is therefore a conservative estimate. So this concept of trying to extend the life is actually very valid. Okay, thanks very much, Carlos and Thank Elizabeth. You.